A monopoly is where a firm dominates the market. An example of an extreme monopoly is a pure monopoly. This is defined as being a sole supplier of goods and services within the market. The competition in markets authority defines this as having 25% or more market share within the market. The main assumptions which follow a pure monopoly are that its products are unique with no closed substitutes, it is the sole supplier within the market and it has high barriers to entry such as fixed costs and legal patents. The advantages of monopolies is that it results in daily losses. This occurs because they restrict output at QM rather than producing at QC which would occur in highly competition. This results in them charging higher prices at PEM rather than PC, which would occur in highly competition. And this is because they are profit maximizers, which means that they are producing at MI equals MC rather than at AI equals MC, hence they are not allocatively inefficient. Hence they are allocatively inefficient. This allows them to make annual profits, but this is made at the expense of consumer surplus. And additionally, there is loss to society, which is evident with shady derivatives and limited daily loss. That dynamic efficiency can be achieved. The condition required for dynamic efficiency is that abnormal profits have to be made. These abnormal profits can then be spent on research and development, but also innovation. This in turn leads to better quality goods for consumers, and it also leads to a more efficient production process for the monopoly itself. occurs when there's more inputs used than necessary for a given level of output. And this occurs when there's a lack of effective competition, and this is evident in monopolies as one firm dominates the market. And for, our, for example, this can lead to wastage and duplication. So rather than producing at the lowest possible ATC curve, they actually produce at ATC1. The benefit of monopolies could be shown by economies of scale. This means that due to the higher scale of production that the monopoly has, this can lead to lower prices in turn for the consumer. An example of this might be purchasing power. When a monopoly is buying its raw materials to produce its service or good, this can the price of the good can be negotiated down into bulk buying and can be then be reflected to consumers. And this can often be cheaper than what perfect uh, competition markets offer as they are the price takers within the, their market, whereas monopolies are the price makers and so can reduce prices, as shown by here, where MC equals MR, whereas perfectly competitive firms must produce at AC equals, uh, MC equals AR, as shown here. In conclusion, there are both positives and negatives that arise with monopolies, one such negative being deadweight losses. This is where less quantity is produced for higher prices, which is due to allocative inefficiencies. However, a positive being dynamic efficiency, where due to abnormal profits being made, these profits can then be spent on new research and development and innovation, which can both benefit the consumer and the monopoly. The lack of effective com uh, competition in monopolies results in X inefficiencies occurring. However, economies of scale, meaning that the increase, increase in scale of production can lead to lower prices for consumers as they may bulk buy their raw materials, but can also lead to international competitiveness due to risk-bearing monopolies. Overall, analysing both sides of the argument, we think that monopolistic markets are good for the UK economy.